One of my clients found a triplex listed on the Cleveland MLS. He's interested in finding out more information. Randy, this is your video. Let's dive in. For the price, I mean, this is actually a really nice house. A little bit more rough, a little more ragged. Gonna keep those values high. Here's quarter mile comps. There's $260,000 houses right down the street. You'll be able to put your offer through me and then after you close, Holden Wise, we can handle the property management. We'll even be able to help you with the insurance. We have lenders who will write loans for investors in all 50 states. This deal is 100% James Wise approved. James Wise denied. All right, Randy, this is actually the second triplex you've had me look into you. First, I want to say thank you for the repeat business, brother. I appreciate that, man. I am glad that uh, not only are you, uh, you know, giving me business, I am glad that you're doing the right thing. You're newer to the Cleveland market, and uh, you're going about this the right way. You're not just throwing money at these properties. You know, the fee that you're paying me, that's really not that much money in the grand scheme of things. I would hate to see you, you know, spend sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars on a property, not know what you're getting. What I really want to see people do, what I really want investors to do, is you know, spend the money inspecting inside the four walls with your appraisal and your inspection, but then also spend the money outside the four walls, understanding the investment. Because you're, you're buying these properties. You're not buying this property to move here, to live here. You're buying this as an investment vehicle. You're buying this as an income-producing asset. The appraisal, it's not going to tell you what kind of income it's really going to produce for you. The home inspection is going to tell you about the property. But it's not going to tell you the ROI that that property is going to be able to produce for you. That's what I do. Okay, I see a lot of investors out there. They don't want to spend the money. You're a fool if you're not willing to spend a few hundred dollars before you put 50, 60, 70, 80, 100, 200 thousand dollars at risk. So again, Randy, man, I appreciate the business. And I also, I'm just proud of you for investing in this market the right way. You're going about it the right way. You're probably never going to be a guy who's going to lose money in a market. Those investors who get greedy or, you know, they don't do their due diligence like you're doing right now. You know, they end up in some risky situations and they could lose some money. But anyway, let's get into this property. So this was listed on the MLS by a realtor. Uh, this realtor, um, her name's Bonnie. She works out of an ERA franchise. Uh, I actually had my license with that ERA franchise before I opened up my own shop. So that's, uh, you know, a little uh, trivia fact for you there. What we got, my man. Uh, 3204 West 73rd Cleveland 44102 and she has priced this property at 59,900 it's a triplex it was built in 1890 uh, let's see what she says here great investment opportunity three unit property back unit completely renovated with three bedrooms living room kitchen and bath new carpet and fresh paint throughout upstairs unit completely renovated also with the exception of brand new white kitchen cabinets that are they're already on site. You don't have to buy them. They're there for you. They're just not installed. Uh, install still in progress. This large eating kitchen. Bath has a ceramic shower. And new vanity. Huge living room slash dining room. Combo features a charming window setting. New carpet, hardwood, laminate, flooring, and freshly painted throughout. Third front unit currently under construction being transformed into a one bedroom studio with a living room slash dining room combo area and bath. A studio uh, is actually a unit that does not have a bedroom. She clearly says they have a bedroom here with a separate living, uh, living room dining room. So like a studio would be like your living room, your dining room and your bedroom are all the same room. Here it's separate. So I'm not really sure why she wrote it that way. Uh, perhaps she's you know, more on the residential side. You know, I know that's a residential brokerage. I know they don't really do much, if any, in the investment space over there. Uh, so maybe she's just kind of <clears throat> not that familiar uh, with this particular type of asset, which is, you know, why you're purchasing the analysis for me, why other investors get these analysis. You know, you take realtors, they, you know, I'm sure this agent is awesome at selling people homes that they're going to live in. And you know this agent understands you know the concept of real estate, selling homes, treating her clients right, all that jazz. 
But what a lot of realtors uh, don't really do that well or don't really know is they don't really know the financial aspects, the investment business. And that's where I come into play. That's why I sell all my properties through the YouTube channel. Uh, if you haven't done so yet, in the show notes, you can click to subscribe to my daily email list. I will send out videos like this one every single day. And of course, smash that subscribe button so you get all the notifications directly from YouTube. That's where I come into play. When their properties I'm not selling, when they're just listed by other agents, you know, who like this one, probably an amazing realtor, but not too familiar speaking the lingo of us investors. You know, a lot of things get left out that you really need to know. That's why you purchase these analysis from me. So back to the description. Uh, where did I leave off? Okay. So being transformed into a one bedroom studio, like I said, that's a one bedroom uh, with a living room, dining room, combo area and bath. Huge shared basement for all three units, laundry and additional room for storage, huge fence and yard, brand new shed for landscaping tools and an extra long drive with two additional parking spaces in rear for a minimum of six parking spaces. Back unit rents 500, upstairs 700 and front studio 450 once renovation is complete on this unit. Start earning income today, selling as is. Some things out of uh, what uh, she said here. That shed, uh, that doesn't really add any value, just so you know. No value to you as an investor. This is a multi-unit property. Uh, your tenants are never going to be able to do the landscaping for you. You can never rely on the tenants in a multifamily, let alone a multifamily building in this asset class, uh, to handle your landscaping. So really no benefit there, just so you know. The basement being really, really big, also no benefit. As long as you have enough room to fit your, your laundry, you're good to go. So those you know things that are being written in here you know selling the property uh, those have absolutely no benefit to you as an investor same thing with the parking spaces six parking spaces uh, i guess that's a little benefit but you know because two of the units are three bed units so maybe that's a little benefit but uh, i don't want you to get caught up <clears throat> in uh you know the the real estate fluff here so to speak i just want you to have you know the facts man uh, going into the unit mix, like I said, the one unit, that's a one bed. Uh, the other two are three beds. Right now, we've got one rented, okay, at 500. The current owner just renovated that. He did a pretty nice job looking at these photos. You know, I see some modern fixtures in the, the kitchens and the baths. You know, these, these are looking pretty good. This is a nice looking unit. He's got it rented at 500, okay. Now, I believe we can actually get that rent up to 700, but you're probably not going to do it right now. Freshly renovated unit. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and assume that that's going to stay at 500. She wrote the market rent of 450 and 700 for the other two units. I disagree a little bit. I think the other unit, yes, has a market rent of 700, but that one bed, one bath, uh, Holton Wise, we have no problem hitting $500 a month. So assuming the rent at the other three unit, the one that's already occupied, I'm just gonna do the numbers for you, assuming that that's gonna stay at 500, uh, because again, freshly renovated, I'm sure that tenant's on a lease. You know, this property just got listed. Uh, so even though I think the rent's higher, let's run the numbers with that unit uh, staying at the 500, then you putting in your own tenants at five and seven and the other two. 1,700 a month, $20,400 a year. Now, of course, you're not going to make $20,400. We have our expenses. I'm going to break those all down for you. Just going on a monthly basis here. $1,700 in rent. Repairs and maintenance, I estimate that at about 5% of the monthly rental rate. That could go up. That could go down. And it's not like an everyday uh, you know, occurrence. It's not like every single month you're spending 85 bucks. I just, over the course of running thousands and thousands of properties, thousands and thousands of tenants, I break this out as a realistic average. It will not always average out like this for you. Some years, some properties, some properties are gonna do better. Some are gonna do worse. Some are gonna do better in some years. Some are gonna do better uh, in other years. Um, but you know, there's a variable expense here, but doing my best to give you an accurate representation of what you can expect to spend. 5%, 85 bucks. Same thing with your vacancy and your non-payment. So that's, you know, missed rent when the tenants don't pay it, plus the cost to evict them. 85 bucks there. Capital expenditures, 
that's saving money to invest in things like furnaces, hot water tanks, roofs, $85. The taxes, going to cost you $110.88 a month. Insurance, we're penciling that in about $80 a month. Water and sewer. You have to pay water and sewer for all these tenants. There's no way about it. Uh, if you go to the FAC, you know, on HoltonWise.com, I actually address this in our FAC because so many investors are trying to come up with ideas and ways they can get around paying the water and sewer in Cleveland. Ain't going to happen, dude. Just check the FAC. I explained the whole thing. It's a really long story, but there's no scenario where you're going to charge the tenants for water and sewer. It ain't happening. I estimated that at two, two and a quarter a month, okay? Of all the variable expenses, that is the most variable expense that there is, man. Like, it was totally unpredictable. Uh, I, I factored it at 75 a unit. Um, obviously, your three-bedroom units are usually going to have more people in them than your, your one-bedroom unit. Uh, but I just factored them all at 75, and that's going to go up, that's going to go down. That's something that could go up in the summer, down in the winter, but you know that's that's really hard to get a de definite average on exactly what your next tenant's going to do because you know people's living behaviors and their showering schedule and how many kids they have. Uh, that's all going to vary widely, and also just so you know, you cannot discriminate against people based on how many kids they have. I have had investors who are like, "Hey, try to rent this unit to people without children, uh, so my water bills can be lower." Yes, I understand where you're coming from. It's all about the bottom line, but you can, you know, that's that's illegal. You can't do that. You cannot discriminate against familial status. You would never buy a property without a building inspection, right? The thing is, the inspection is limited to the building itself. The profitability of a real estate investment is not just about the four walls and a roof you're buying. It's also about the neighborhood, rental demand, and tenant base. Before you risk your hard-earned money on a deal that you come across on your own, go to HoltonWise.com to purchase a video analysis of that property today. So when you're an investor, you have to accept some unknowns. This is going to be one of them, but giving you a reasonable estimate, two and a quarter, that's what I can assume over the long haul you'll average it out. Lawn care, 42 bucks a month. We cut grass here, I think it's like 16, maybe 18 times a year, depending on the weather. Um, we charge $33 a cut, so I average that out for you, 42 bucks a month, so you're gonna pay about 500 a year for that. And then your property management fees, the fees to people like me to handle this property for you, because obviously you're out of state, you can't do it yourself, so you gotta pay the man. 170 a month. That's gonna bring your total expenses, 888, nope, I lied. It's going to bring your total expenses to $882.88 off of an income of $1,700. That's going to leave you with a net operating income. This is what you're really going to make. Remember, you know, you're scheduled to make $1,700 a month. That ain't going to happen though, dude. After all your expenses, your $882.88 in expenses, your actual money that you're going to make is going to be on average $817.12 or $9,805.44. So every year, you're supposed to bring in $20,400 of revenue. After all of our expenses are added up for the year, I anticipate you're going to bring in just under $10,000 a year on this property. Going further into the numbers, it's not just about the monthly numbers, how do we get there? How do we get to the monthly numbers? Uh, what are our initial costs going to be? Now, I ran the analysis based upon you paying full list price for the property, $55,000, okay? Truth be told, I like this deal, um, you know, for a bunch of other reasons, and I'll get into some of those after I finish this number analysis for you. Um, so I do like this deal for you. I think you could probably pick it up for less than list price, but uh, I don't like to, you know, shoot you like sunshine and rainbows here. We, we, you know, I don't know if the seller would even take less than list price. So I did it at list price and it still pencils out, still makes money at list price. So it's still James Wise approved at list price. Uh, but I, I do think based on neighborhood comps and such um, and the amount of work you got to do, 
uh, I think you could probably pick this up for maybe five or 10,000 less than list price. So if I were you, I would probably be doing my offer around starting at 45, uh, would definitely be comfortable paying 50, 51, but I, I think you can get a little bit off. But I just broke down the numbers at the full price, 55,000. Now one of the units, they just renovated, they got a guy already living there, uh, that's unit three. So zero bucks, man, you don't have to spend any money there. Unit two, sounds like they're pretty much done with everything. Uh, just very minimal stuff. They said they got the materials on site. You just need to put it all together. So I went ahead, penciled in $2,000 for you on that one, okay? Could be higher, could be lower, but for now, I think $2,000 is a fair estimate, and we could assume, you know, there's other stuff you got to button up besides installing those cabinets, so I think $2,000 is a fair estimate for that. The other unit, the small, small unit, it sounds like that unit's like totally, you know, just needs renovated. Like, doesn't sound like much has been done. So I went with a, a pretty worst case scenario there because, uh, you know, it's a desktop analysis, okay? If you actually wanted my team to get inside the property, you know, we have that product. It's a desktop analysis and video tour. It is a little bit more money than a desktop analysis, but we do have that available for you. Um, not trying to upsell you here, not saying you need to get that. I honestly think the desktop analysis being the cheapest product is the best bang for your buck because if it comes time to paying somebody to go in the property, you don't need to pay us to go into the property and pay an inspector to go into the property. I think you just save that money and pay the inspector because they're going to really look into the house much closer than you know my video team is going to do. So because of all that, I kind of want a worst case scenario estimate. It's probably not even going to be this much, but I don't know exactly how far along in this uh, renovation they are. And uh, we couldn't get any return calls from the agent. Uh, so I penciled in 10000 bucks. So that would take your total investment, if you bought it at list, and I was right on my estimates, up to $67,000. So your total investment's $67,000, and it's going to kick off just under $10,000 a year. So that's going to put you with a cap rate, 14.63. Now, in your email to me, you said you wanted to pull out all the money, you said you wanted to get a mortgage and you wanted to make over 500 bucks a month in your pocket. Now, on the notes, uh, the, the MLS notes, the agent she wrote, she's only accepting cash offers. And that makes sense, right? Because we have a three unit building and as it sits right now, it's not habitable. One of the units is habitable, we got a tenant in there. Okay, cool. One unit, totally trash, totally under renovation. So that's not habitable. Bank's not gonna loan on that. The other unit, it's mostly done, but the kitchen isn't even installed. Not habitable, bank isn't gonna loan on it. So sometimes when people want you to pay cash, they're nervous uh, about the property appraising, or maybe they're trying to hide something. Not the case here. Totally reasonable for why this seller needs cash, right? To me, if I had to guess, just speculating. Again, I don't know the seller. I have no relationship to the seller. Uh, I don't know the realtor, okay? You know, you found this online, you sent it to me, you wanted me to give you my opinion. Based on my research, this is just speculation, but uh, I assume the seller got in over his head doing a renovation, realized it's a lot more work to renovate a property than he thought, and now he's just pulling the plug halfway through. So everything checks out with why they need cash offers. Uh, so that's totally legit, no cause for concern there. So <clears throat> assuming, you did a refinance after you came in, bought this thing cash, total into the thing, 67000 I'm just going to guesstimate uh, that it appraised for the amount of money that you put in, okay? 67000 It's going to give you a mortgage amount, total mortgage, 50250 uh, Estimating that you're doing like a 30-year loan, fixed rate. Uh, interest rates are a little bit under 4% uh, in certain areas right now. Somewhere around that, they go up, they go down. Well, more or less, they've been kind of going up. Uh, they haven't really gone down in a little while, but you're around the 4% mark. Uh, you're going to have a down payment, 25% down. So that's going to be 16750 and it's going to cost you $238 a month. So if you take your monthly net operating income, which was 817.12, subtract your monthly mortgage, that's going to leave you with your net cash flow. This is the money you're putting in your pocket. This is after you've paid for all the expenses and you've paid down your principal. 
okay, you're paying your interest and your principal, it's going to hit your number. It's going to hit you above the 500. You should make, you should reasonably expect to make 579.12, 579.12 a month or $6,949.44 a year. Okay. You know, this is a pretty solid deal. Uh, you know, the cash on cash return is, is close to 60%. If it performs how I've projected, that's the thing though, right? It's got to perform. Um, will it always perform? No, no, it won't dude. That's, it's not going to perform like perfectly. Okay. The neighborhood itself, and, and you're familiar, you've, you know, Randy, you're familiar. You obviously watch a lot of my content. Thank you for that. You've already purchased another analysis for me in a similar neighborhood. Uh, you know my thoughts on the neighborhood, uh, and, and you understand it. It's a D-class area, okay? This is a D neighborhood. These rents, you know, on paper, these are reasonable estimates. Everything looks friggin' awesome, dude. Like 50, 60% cash on cash returns, that's great. You know, making $579 a month after we pay down our mortgage, that is awesome. If it performs, it's not always gonna perform. Some months it's gonna be amazing. Some years it's gonna be amazing. All your tenants are gonna pay. You know, you're going to get long-term tenants in there. They're going to do really, really well. You're not really going to have many uh, repairs or issues to worry about. But then you could run into a string of bad luck, man. You could evict like two or three tenants in a row. When you evict them, they could do extreme damage, wiping out the cash flow for a couple years. The lower the quality of the neighborhood, the higher the frequency of those things happening is going to be. And also the harder it is to predict exactly how the asset's going to perform. Because, you know, by proxy, these people, they're, they're less, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Less predictable, less stable uh, than tenants in higher asset classes, right? These are people that are turning over their jobs faster. They're moving more. You know, there's just a lot more things going on in their lives. You know, they, they don't have like a big savings. So if something bad happens, like a car breaks down, they might be spending all of their money that they have towards rent to fix the car. So these are all things you need to factor in. But this particular D neighborhood, I think, is much better than most other D neighborhoods. This is absolutely my favorite D neighborhood in the Cleveland market because, you know, the prices are so cheap, okay? All that risk of dealing with the tenant base, you know, it's being made up for uh, with the prices. Like, you can't go to a B neighborhood and get a, a paper cap of like 14, dude. It ain't going to happen. You try to buy a really stable investment, dude, you're on like a five cap, right? So we're triple that. So, you know, you're being paid uh, for willing to take on the risk, right? That's great. The second thing I really, really like is when you hear things about the Cleveland market, the resurgence, you know, we're talking about like some neighborhoods that just took off. Gordon Square, Ohio City, Tremont. Those are super trendy areas. You get a lot of like hipsters or yuppie type uh, you know, professionals moving in those areas, college educated, making a ton of money, new construction houses like that, you know, up to four, five, six, seven hundred thousand uh, dollars for these awesome urban homes, right? Those are the hot neighborhoods. But, you know, investors from out of town, you're probably not going to make any money in those neighborhoods because, you know, the ship has already sailed. Those neighborhoods are already expensive. What I like about this neighborhood, okay, is it borders all three of those neighborhoods. It borders those neighborhoods. So when these higher, you know, net worth, uh, you know, folks, man, when they're, when they're moving into these areas to be close to downtown, be close to the queue, be close to the Browns, be close to the casino, right? You know, the prices are going up, 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 and the amount of inventory is going down, down, down. So they're gonna, you know, spread out a little bit. This area right here is the closest place they can spread out to. So you're gonna probably start to see some serious gentrification you know, on the fringes of this neighborhood. And then pff, I think, you know, it's a good bet uh, that this is the next hotspot. I mean, it's, it's right there. You could usually see the downtown skyline from most any house in this neighborhood, you know, or at least most any street in this neighborhood, you know? Uh, so the risk is appropriately priced. And in my opinion, I think, you know, in a half decade to a decade, uh, you have a pretty reasonable expectation that this is gonna be a hot spot. And that's when the real money's made, man. If you can make some money, 
you know, running a low end rental like this for like 10 years. And then it turns out that you get to sell to like a developer who's developing the whole neighborhood, you know, tearing these old houses down. Cause I mean, dude, this is an old house, man, uh, built in 1890. Okay. So if you could run this thing for like 10 years and then someone comes in and gives you double or triple what you paid for it, that is a friggin' win. So Randy, dude, again, thank you for purchasing another analysis. This deal is James Wise approved. Even if you had to pay list price, I think you'll do pretty well, but I think you should start the bidding. I, Me personally, I would start it at 45. I mean, you're paying cash. You know, there's not a lot of people out there paying cash. It's a high risk area. Not a lot of people want to dump in a bunch of cash into a high risk area. You know, it's going to be very labor intensive, very management intensive. So because of all that, I think you could be aggressive with your bidding. I, again, I would try to bid it at 45, you know, maybe end up closing around 50. Uh, but if you did, you know, the total 55K, you ended up into the entire asset at 67K, you're still bringing in 1,700 a month. And I still think you got another 200 bucks a month in upside because that other three bedroom unit, you know, my opinion, market rent 700. And, you know, my opinion, you could take that as uh, basically fact considering I am the biggest scattered site property manager in the entire market. Nobody else in this on this planet has more of these kind of properties in their portfolio than me right here. Uh, and this is totally unbiased opinion. You've already paid me to do this video for you uh, as far as you actually purchasing the property. If you want, since you got the analysis from me, I can write the offer. I could represent you as your buyer's broker. However, you are not required uh, to, to go through me, man. If you want to reach right out directly to that uh, ERA agent and just bid it right through the listing agent, you know, that's, that's fine with me, man. It's when you're doing like a deal, right? <clears throat> There's two agents on a deal. You got the listing agent and you know, you got the buyer's agent typically, right? You want to have your own representation uh, so you get good information and you get help on the bidding strategy because you know that listing agent um, You know, she's primarily out there working for that seller But I've just given you all the information that you know You're gonna want or that you could need so you're already equipped with all of that So, you know, I've given you the value here So as your buyer's agent there really isn't you know much value I can add in addition to this so if I were you I would probably go right to the listing agent directly because you go right to her directly. Your offer is now much more attractive than other buyers offers who have their own buyer's agent. Because if two offers come in and they're identical, you know, she's got a fiduciary duty, okay, to make her seller the most money. But if two identical offers come in, somebody else's offer with their own buyer agent and your offer where you went right to her, and she makes more money selling it to you as opposed to selling it to this person. You know, if you guys are even and she can't get her, you know, her client a better deal, uh, two equal deals. Well, guess what, man, Randy, you're going to win that every single time because the agent is getting paid as well. Um, so that's just food for thought. But again, I have no problem handling the transaction for you if you want my services. Uh, if not, go right to her. And after it closes, Holton Wise, we can still handle all the property management. We could handle those renovations. Um, if you do write an offer though, even though you purchase this analysis, again, super important, make it contingent on a third party home inspection. I've given you all the information I have. Uh, I gave you a lot of great information uh, about the property and outside the walls, how it's going to work as an investment, but you still need to get a home inspector in there. You need him to get in there and look at the units uh, that aren't finished. You need him to look at the electrical, the hot water tank, the roof. You know, I didn't even touch on that stuff. Um, I'm assuming uh, that it's in varying levels uh, of condition, right? We know we have one renovated unit, so I would assume there's no issues with the electrical hot water tank. Uh, in the furnace in that unit. The other three bedroom unit, you know, they're renovating that. So maybe it's uh, squared away, but I put you at a $10,000 budget on that one. So I budgeted that you may have to spend some money um, because your furnaces, guys, it's going to cost you about three grand and they last about 30 years. Hot water tanks are going to cost you about a grand. They will last about 15 years. Uh, 
So I'm not assuming between the other two units that both furnaces and both hot water tanks are bad, but you know we could reasonably assume you're probably replacing at least one uh, of each. That's just my guesstimate. You'll have to figure out more info when you get a home inspection. And then the other thing, the last thing, right? We have that roof. So on our flat roof, you know, there's a product that you can put on these flat roofs. You got to prep the prep the roof. Uh, then you put this product it's sold by Sherwin Williams. It's usually like fifteen thousand dollars for a roof of this size. Uh, that's going to give you a lot longer life. It's supposed to have a lifetime warranty uh, because the way these rubber roofs work, okay, is uh, you know people do these roofs and then they just put layer after layer after layer after layer on top of these roofs, uh, and you know eventually you get to where the roof is like 70, 80 years old. Um, you can't just keep adding more tar on top of it because it just gets too heavy. It's too heavy. The structure wasn't built uh, for the roof to be that heavy. Uh, so what we found, if they haven't totally torn that off and replaced the roof uh, in the last like maybe 20 years or so, uh, the best thing for you to do would be to put that product on it, that, that seal coat product, because you can put that on top of it. It doesn't have the same you know, weight as tar. Uh, but you'll have to consult your home inspector for more details because, again, you know, we didn't go on site. We didn't see that roof. I don't know the exact condition of that roof. Uh, that's pretty much everything I've got for you, Randy. Uh, I hope I've answered all your questions. If there is anything I left out, anything you're not satisfied with, anything you want a little bit more clarification on, just go ahead and punch it in the comments below. I will shoot you a response. For the rest of you, if you're looking at properties, if you're looking to become investors in the Cleveland market, first thing to do is subscribe to this channel. Go to the show notes. Click subscribe on my daily email list. I'll send you a video of investment properties for sale every single day. Okay, you're going to get a full video tour of the property. And I'm going to break down the property much like I did here. However, there's like 5,000 realtors in the Cleveland market, guys. I sell more rental real estate than any of them. Okay, there's no human being on the planet that sells more Cleveland rental real estate than me. However, there's still 5,000 other people selling real estate. So not every single deal is going to come through me. There's a lot of deals out there. So like Randy did, if you're looking on like Realtor.com, Zillow, just you know MLS feed from your personal Realtor, uh, but you really want an investor to take a look at your deal, if you go down to the show notes, uh, there's a link to purchase an analysis just like the one that I'm doing right now for Randy. Uh, and you know after you purchase that analysis, like I said, you're not actually required to use me as your agent. If you have your own agent, you know, and they're driving you around town, stuff like that. I mean, I'm never going to do anything like that. Uh, but if, you know, they're driving you around, but they don't know exactly all that investor lingo, go ahead and write an offer contingent on a third-party home inspection and an analysis from me. So you have time to really think it over and you could really analyze, you know, what I've told you about the property from an investment standpoint while you're considering uh, moving forward with the sale or not, you know. Every single time you guys make these deals contingent on inspection, that's kind of a norm in the industry. But what I'd like to see is you make them contingent on inspection and an analysis from me and have no problem with you utilizing your own real estate agent when you do that. Anyway, that's everything I've got for you guys today. As always, I'm James Wise with Holton Wise, and this is Real Estate Investing Made Easy. Oh, for the price, I mean, this is actually a really nice house. A little bit more rough, a little more ragged. It's gonna keep those values high. Here's quarter mile comps. There's $260,000 houses right down the street. You'll be able to put your offer through me, and then after you close, Holden Wise, we can handle the property management. We'll even be able to help you with the insurance. We have lenders who will write loans for investors in all 50 states. This deal is 100% James Wise approved. James Wise denied. Cleveland, Ohio is widely considered to be one of the top rental markets in the entire United States. This is because here in Cleveland, our housing prices are low and our rental prices and demand are high. At Holton Wise, we provide the complete turnkey solution for all real estate investors, whether they are local, out of state, or even abroad. As real estate brokers, we will provide you with agent representation 
to help you buy properties ranging from single family homes to large apartment complexes. We even have referrals for lenders who can provide investment property loans to investors located in all 50 states, allowing you to capitalize on the use of leverage or other people's money. We have referrals to top-notch title companies so you know that all of your transactions are safe and secure, with every single property being delivered to you with clear title. Once you close on the property, we have an investor-focused insurance brokerage who can handle all your property insurance needs. This insurance brokerage handles auto, home, life, and business policies, but they specialize in working with policies for landlords. We also have full service property management. We can handle all rental property advertisements, tenant placement, rent collection, evictions, maintenance, landscaping, construction, and repairs. In addition, Holton Wise also offers digital media and education. One day, when you are ready to sell your investment, Holton Wise, as the number one seller of investment properties in the greater Cleveland area, can market your property in a video just like this one to our worldwide base of investors who are looking to capitalize on the high cash flow opportunities in the Cleveland, Ohio market. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content, including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from health. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.